Wendy Hill speaks about her book, Understanding Life, What My Ancestors Taught Me Through My Dreams, at the Makuzasne Mohawk Library. This woman came to me, She's who has helped me throughout my whole life to understand things. She's my guide. And um, she came to me in a dream and she said, you have to um, write this book and you have to share with the people what we've shared with you. Um, because even though you go and you do workshops and you do conferences and, and you um, are out there to help the people, that there's still so many people who are so hurt and damaged that they can't bring themselves to get the help that they need. And so this book is going to reach those people and it's going to help them to heal. And so that's why you need to write. What happened was for four years, um, I would do talks and I would do workshops, conferences, and I'd share what was given to me, this, this um, knowledge. And uh, people would say to me, have you written that down? You should write that down. <laughs> Have you written a book? And, and they, every time I spoke, somebody would come and say started that. writing the book. And then people stopped saying that to me. You know, you should write that down. I'm like, I am. And, and it just slowly stopped. So then I could really start writing. And, um, and what I noticed was that as I was writing, because when I first started, I, I was actually physically writing. I wasn't on the laptop. And, um, and as I was writing, um, I could see what they were, what these spirits were wanting me to put in there. I could see it in front of me, and I, and I would just write what was coming so, to me. As I was. Once I got it to uh, the stage of, of the manuscript, I had um, this man who was an uh, addiction worker. This was uh, last fall. He, uh, he says, uh, you're writing a book, and I said, yeah. So he said, I'll, 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 I'll edit, edit your manuscript for you if you want. So I said, oh, okay, sure, thanks. And uh, so I gave him the manuscript, and uh, he comes back to me two days later, and he says, oh, my God, Wendy. Oh, my God, that book is this powerful. He says, I, I, I apologize. He says, I couldn't even edit it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I started reading it and I just got so into it that I couldn't edit it. I just kept reading it and, sorry. <laughs> so I was like, that's okay, you know, I, I've heard that before and just, I don't know, take your time and go through it again, I guess. So about a month later, he calls me up and he says, Wendy, he says, I got a favor to ask. I said, okay, what? He says, um, my son tried to commit suicide. He said three times in one week. And he's 23 years old. And I was wondering if I could photocopy a manuscript and if I could take it to him. I think it would help him. I said, go ahead. <laughs> you think it would help? Go ahead. And so, anyways, a month later, I was at the Sky Dome Power in Toronto. And I see him there, and they're from James Bay, the tree. And he's like, why me? And he was so happy. He goes, I'm going to tell you, I've got to tell you about your book. So we went and we sat down, and he says, um, you know, he said, I haven't been close to my son since he was about 14 years old. He said, I don't know, we just drifted apart, whatever, and we just couldn't talk. And um, he says, um, I got back home and I hugged him, told him I loved him, and I gave him your manuscript. And I said, here, read this. So he took it and he went in his bedroom. And he said, and he stayed in there all night. He said, this was about 8 o'clock in the evening. And I kept going in and checking on him, he said, because we were worried about him. And he was in there reading it. <laughs> and he says, and the next morning, me and my wife got up and we were having breakfast, 8 o'clock in the morning. And he says, and uh, my son comes out and he sits down with us. And he says, first off, I can't remember the last time I seen my son up at 8 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> since he was about 14. <laughs> and secondly, he says, he's never really visited with us like this since then. And uh, he said, he sat down, he was happy. He's thanked me. 
for bringing that book. And he visited us. <laughs> and he said, and you know, he hasn't been the same since. He said, and all I can think is it's that book that changed him. <laughs> he goes, he's a different man. And so anyways, so this was back in September. So three weeks ago, they invited me to come up there and uh, to do some work. And uh, they were having an addictions awareness week. So during the day, I would do one-on-ones with people. And then in the evening, I would do workshops. And so anyways, every night I was there, his son was there. He had introduced me to him. So uh, I'd be talking, you know, and I'd look over and he'd just smile, you know, like, like I don't know what he saw with me, but <laughs> he was just like, and anyways, um, the last day he came to the health center where I was working and he says, um, uh, he says, I, I, I want to thank you. He said, I know I've seen you all this week and I never talked to you. He said, I was, I was afraid of you because of what I read. And uh, he said, I just really want to thank you. He said, I, I know I wouldn't be alive today if I didn't read your book. He said, it changed the way that I saw myself. It changed the way that I saw other people. It's changed the way that I see my life. It changed the way that I saw the Creator. And now I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, and, and he's been sober and off drugs since that day that he read it. And then he told me, he says, I passed um, tobacco to this medicine man from Manitoba. He says, I'm going to live with him. He said, he's going to teach you. When that man told me back in the fall what had happened, I just kind of thought like, wow. You know, and I never really, really took it in that much until when I met him and he told me how he felt and what he'd done for him. I was just like blown away. <laughs> and so, um, anyway, they end up ordering 60 and what they're planning to do is uh, they're going to give it to the high school students um, before they get out for summer break because that's when a lot of the suicides happen. So, so that's just some of the um, things that have happened, but uh, throughout this book, this book is, is really um, powerful. It, it really is, because when you read it, you think that it's not real. It can't be real, like you, you think, no, this, this couldn't have happened. <laughs> and it's happened. And uh, uh, when another young man, he read it, and he said to me, you know what's so powerful about this book? And I said, what's that? He says, when I read things, I think, no, that probably didn't happen. <laughs> no, that can't be. He goes, but I know you. And I know the things you talk about, it, it's coming from someone, like wise. And, uh, it makes sense to me. And the only thing I can think is that it is coming from the, that higher power, those spirits. And uh, he says, as I'm reading this, he said, I can hear your voice. I can see what you're talking about when I'm reading it. <laughs> and it blows my mind when I'm reading it. He said, I, I don't know how you did it. And I said, well, you know, when I was told to write this, they were talking to me as I was writing it. So I knew I had to write it as they were telling me. And um, um, and that's the thing about truth. When people speak the truth, you're going to be able to see it. And if, and if they're lying, you won't be able to see what they're talking about. And so when I speak, people can see what I'm talking about because it's truth. And that's how you can tell the difference between a lie and truth. You should be able to see it when people talk. 